Hello everyone, welcome to C Academy YouTube channel. My name is Velerine Ngosi. In today's lesson, I will be solving a previous question paper, which is about menstrual cycle. So this is a part of the question. So the question paper is this one. Due to visibility, if you can see here, the question paper, if I zoom it, it's not visible. So I had to reproduce it. Uh, here are the question. This question paper contains about eight questions. So I will answer all the questions here. So this is the question paper. It's for life sciences. This is for life sciences. So uh, let's get to it. Question C. Study the graph below which shows the menstrual cycle and the influence of the different hormones on it. So this is the graph. So to interpret the graph, uh, here we have a pituitary or hypophysis hormone level. Here we have the level of the hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland. We have FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. We have luteinizing hormone. So the luteinizing hormone is the one that causes ovulation. So if you can see on the growth follicles, these are the follicles as the level as the pituitary gland secrete. Uh, FSH so the follicles start to grow so that is why they say it's a follicle stimulating hormone so it stimulates the follicles to grow so from here from 0 I mean somewhere from 0 to 7 if you see the level of FSH it's a little bit higher so it causes the follicles to increase in size and then the LA, the LH which is the luteinizing hormone here is increasing very high sharply then it causes the ovulation so this is the result of the LH so after ovulation has taken place uh, LH has, is dropping also FSH is also becomes very low in the blood so and then we have ovarian hormone uh, ho ovarian hormone we have estrogen so as the follicles are growing they secrete estrogen so estrogen is secreted by the follicles so if you can see here uh, as the follicles are growing the level of the estrogen is also going up and then after the ovulation has taken place the level of estrogen is decreasing so and then after ovulation we we we, we are no longer having corpus luteum now we have i mean we are no longer having uh, graphene follicles we have corpus luteum corpus luteum it secretes progesterone so this is the, that is secreting is the one that is secreting progesterone if you see here after ovulation the level of progesterone is increasing so because it's secreted by the corpus luteum so uh, this is the corpus luteum and then the level here the thickness of the uterine lining so if you see here we have the thickness is decreasing from 0 to day 7 the thickness is decreasing and then from day 7 to day 14 the thickness is increasing it increased by the estrogen as the estrogen is sec it's secreted by the follicles and then this estrogen uh, increases the size of the uh, endometrium lining or the thickness of the endometrium lining so this is the interpretation of the graph as one is secreting fsh the fsh causes the follicles to grow this follicle secreted estrogen and then estrogen increase the size of the endometrium and then here after the uh, luteinizing hormone causes ovulation then we have corpus luteum corpus luteum now start to secrete progesterone the progesterone has taken over from the estrogen in increasing the size of the endometrium so this is how the shortcut of this graph or the shortcut of menstrual cycle and now let's get to the questions so question number one on which day does the ovulation takes place so here this is the ovulation ovulation has taken place here uh, takes place at the day 14 so the answer is day 
14. So ovulation has taken place uh, on the day number 14. So we go to question number 2. So the question number 2 say, between which days does menstruation take place? So this is the menstruation phase from zero, from day 0 to day 7. So if you can see uh, the thickness of the endometrium, it's decreasing. So this is where menstruation is taking place. So the answer is from day 0 to day 7. So uh, menstruation is taken from day 0 to day 7. So this is the time where menstruation is taking place. And then question number three. Question number three say state one function of the luteinizing hormone. So uh, like I said, luteinizing hormone stimulate uh, ovulation. So the, as the level of luteinizing hormone increases, then ovulation is taking place. So and another function of the luteinizing hormone, it stimulate the corpus luteum. So this is the reason why we end up with having a corpus luteum. So it stimulates ovulation or it stimulates the formation of corpus luteum. So these are one function of luteinizing hormone. And then question number four, uh, it say describe the changes in the level of luteinizing hormone as is shown in the graph. So here we have to describe the changes that is taking place uh, in the luteinizing hormone. So let me get my highlighter here. Let me highlight the level of luteinizing hormone from day zero. The level is very low until somewhere day 13. Then from there, the level is sharply increased. So if you see here, this is the the level of uh, LH. So if you want to write the answer, what are we going to say? We'll say the level remains low up to day 13 then increases sharply at the day 14. So level remains low up to day 13 and then increases sharply up to day 14. So this is the answer. This is how we write the answer. And then a uh, number Question number five say, describe the relationship between the level of estrogen and the endometrium from the day seven to day 14. So let's see, estrogen, estrogen is secreted by the follicles. So from day seven, the estrogen is increasing. So as the follicles are growing, the estrogen is increasing and the level, the thickness of the endometrium is also increasing. So we, to write the answer, you can say as the estrogen level increases, uh, the thickness of the endometrium is also increasing. So yes, as the estrogen level increases, the thickness of the endometrium also increases. So we go to number six and uh, number six say explain why it is necessary for the level of progesterone in the blood to increase after ovulation. So we know that progesterone, it needs to maintain the endometrium as the level of estrogen is, is decreasing. So progesterone has to take over in maintaining uh, the endometrium. So to write it, you can say uh, the progesterone maintains the increase in the thickness of the endometrium. Yes, uh, the progesterone is increasing because it needs to maintain the thickness of the endometrium. So the next question, which is question number seven. Say, did fertilization take place in the 
28 day cycle illustrated in the graph so on the 28 day if you see uh, the corpus luteum is decreasing in size it's shrinking so that is mean fertilization has not taken place as the corpus luteum is secreting progesterone the level of progesterone it's also decreasing so that there's no need to maintain the the level of endometrium because fertilization has not taken place so th the answer is no fertilization didn't take place because if you see the progesterone level is decreasing also the size of the corpus luteum is also uh, shrinking or is decreasing so fertilization has not taken place uh, question eight which is the last question explain your answer to question number seven so they want to know why you say fertilization has not taken place uh, we can give two answers here you can say the progesterone level has dropped or again we can say the size of corpus luteum is shrinking So this is one of the reason why we say fertilization has not taken place. So if fertilization has taken place, this size of the corpus luteum will remain like this as the days are passing. And also the level of progesterone will also move constantly like this. So here the fertilization has not taken place. So if you have watched this video to this far, say thank you very much. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that we can grow if you are studying good luck with your studies god bless you thank you very much